Hello and welcome. I'm Saeed from StoryPlanet.net. Dive right into the essence of the most captivating books without reading them cover to cover. Whether you're on the go, at the gym, or just relaxing at home, we offer you a unique and enriching listening experience. Today, we are exploring the book, Loving Kindness, a creation by Sharon Salzberg. Loving Kindness, 1995, is a gentle and illuminating exploration of the deep significance of love and happiness. This book provides valuable psychological insights and practical meditations, demonstrating how the Buddhist approach to cultivating a liberated heart can enable us to access our inner joy and cultivate kindness towards both ourselves and others. Before we delve into these revelations, it's interesting to note that Sharon Salzberg, a renowned spiritual teacher in America, has dedicated 50 years to practicing Buddhist meditation. In 1976, she played a key role in founding the Insight Meditation Society in Barre, Massachusetts, and since then she has traveled the world teaching meditation and giving important speeches. Salzberg is the esteemed author of several books, including Real Happiness and Real Change, Mindfulness to Heal Ourselves and the World, which became a New York Times bestseller. She has also made contributions to esteemed publications such as Time, O, and Yoga Journal, among others. Additionally, she hosts The Meta Hour, a podcast that features interviews with prominent figures in the meditation and mindfulness movement. With eight key ideas to unveil, brace yourself for a deep dive into this captivating book. On storyplane.net to start, the text encourages embracing oneself and others with loving kindness. Many people associate happiness with external factors, but this kind of happiness is short-lived. True happiness comes from within and can be attained through the practice of loving kindness. By incorporating meditation and compassion into our daily lives, we can experience lasting happiness and transform our way of being. These summarizer explore the benefits of meditation, the cause of suffering, and the importance of practicing compassion. Key idea number one, to achieve true happiness, it is important to accept and embrace all aspects of your life. The yin-yang symbol represents embracing both light and darkness. To achieve true happiness, we must accept all aspects of our experience, including suffering. Western culture tends to avoid pain and sadness, but accepting them can lead to connection and growth. Meditation, specifically loving-kindness meditation, can help cultivate this mindset and has been scientifically proven to reduce pain and stress. The Buddha also emphasized the benefits of loving-kindness practice. The next summarizer will explore other virtues and meditations to cultivate them. Key idea number two. Loving-kindness can overpower fear in the mind. Love in Western culture is often associated with passion or sentimentality, while the Buddhist concept of metta encompasses love, kindness, and friendship. Metta is a powerful force that can uproot negative emotions and is the foundation of the heavenly abodes. By practicing metta, starting with directing it towards oneself, one can develop genuine love and offer it to others. A simple meditation practice involves reflecting on positive qualities within oneself and repeating phrases of well-being for oneself and others, including neutral people and even enemies. Key idea number three, attachment is the cause of suffering. The text discusses how desire and attachment hinder the development of metta, loving kindness. It explains that attachment is the root of suffering because it leads to seeking and guarding, which prevent us from being present and appreciating what we have. The text suggests that true happiness is found in certain mental states, not external objects or desires. It encourages reflecting on what brings happiness and the importance of good friendships. Finally, it explains how to practice metta by directing loving kindness towards oneself and a friend. Key idea number four, anger cannot be prevented, but you have the power to control how you respond to it. The text emphasizes that desire and anger are destructive states, but they also have positive aspects. Anger can drive positive actions, but can also burn you up and lead to suffering. 
The key is to control how you relate to anger and let go of harmful actions. Forgiveness is important but challenging. Cultivating love and understanding the impersonal nature of harmful states can help alleviate suffering. Key idea number five, practicing compassion teaches us that we are all interconnected. The key point of the text is that practicing compassion is a way to cultivate love and understanding for all living beings. Practicing meditation and the Brahma Viharas can help develop a sense of oneness and empathy. Compassion means recognizing suffering and trying to alleviate it, even in small ways. It can be practiced through thoughts, actions, and even simple gestures like saying hello. Meditation can be used to cultivate compassion by extending feelings of love and kindness to oneself and all beings. Compassion can also be practiced while walking outdoors and directing positive thoughts towards oneself and others. Key idea number six, sympathetic joy brings liberation to the mind. The key message is that sympathetic joy, known as mudita, liberates the mind. It involves rejoicing in others' happiness instead of begrudging it. By practicing sympathetic joy, one can suspend judgment, let go of comparison, and feel happy for others. Compassion balances sympathetic joy and prevents it from becoming ignorant optimism. By combining compassion and sympathetic joy, one can cultivate happiness regardless of others' joy or suffering. This can be done through meditation and sharing merit with others. Key idea number seven. Equanimity emphasizes focusing on the present moment. Equanimity is the ability to find balance in the midst of life's extremes. It allows us to fully present with our experiences and accept them as they are. By practicing equanimity, we can relate to each situation as new and let go of old habits. It doesn't mean we stop feeling, but rather we can feel happiness without craving and experience pain without condemning it. In equanimity meditation, we focus on different individuals and remind ourselves that their happiness and unhappiness depend on their actions, not our wishes for them. If our mind slips into indifference, we reflect on the immensity of change and return to the meditation phrases. Key idea number eight. The key point is to cultivate generosity and good karma in order to live a loving life. Generosity is the first quality of the awakened mind and is necessary for a spiritual life. Giving brings joy at every stage and influences meditation practice. Cultivating generosity and ethical conduct is key to living a loving and happy life. Ethical conduct involves not harming others and recognizing our interconnectedness. Karma, the belief in cause and effect, teaches that we are responsible for our own happiness. Taking responsibility for our actions empowers us to create positive change. In conclusion, the key message is that happiness comes from within and can be achieved through practicing loving-kindness in daily life and meditation. This pursuit helps develop compassion, shed unproductive states of being and realize our connection to others, leading to lasting happiness. The advice is to trust the process, even if the effects aren't immediately obvious, and to periodically check in with ourselves to see how our responses and actions change over time. Thank you for listening to this summary. If you enjoyed this exploration, we invite you to discover other fascinating books on StoryPlanet.net. Don't wait any longer. A multitude of books, stories and knowledge await you there. See you soon on StoryPlanet.net.